Sure. The, the reason Mars has taken on a, a climate leadership role, which is the reason, in fact, that we became part of, of RE100, is um, you know, we are uh, firmly convinced of, of the science behind uh, climate change. There's been a lot of work done by a lot of people over a long period of time. And the direction is pretty unambiguous, is, is that uh, you know, there's a real problem. And uh, we're pretty clear on what the cause of the problem is, is greenhouse gas emissions. And, uh, and one of the, one of the first uh, things and one of the most important things that we can do based on the sort of business that we are is shift the, uh, the energy sources from our factories from fossil to renewable and low carbon energy sources. Sure, so Mars is, uh, has, runs itself on the five principles, quality, responsibility, mutuality, efficiency, and freedom. And, and sustainability and then renewable energy as sort of a subset of that really plays to several of the principles. So the efficiency principle is an obvious one. So our efficiency principle is about using resource to their fullest and wasting nothing. Um, you know, so energy efficiency is, is living that, right? So we don't want to be inefficient with our use of energy. You know, when we want lighting, we don't need to generate heat. So we want to be using lights that make light, not light and heat. Um, so, so that's one aspect of it. And then, uh, and then the renewable energy, I think, speaks to uh, a couple of the other principles, um, you know, particularly mutuality, which is about sort of doing what is right, not only for ourselves, but for our business partners and, and for our extended supply chains, uh, you know, and, and tackling some of the issues or preventing, hopefully, some of the issues associated with climate change um, uh, are a great example of, of us growing the business in the way we want to grow it, but not having consequences on people that, that maybe don't even get to be part of our, our supply chains, um, you know, in some of the, the poorest parts of the world. In terms of, in terms of the low carbon economy, I think fundamentally we have, we have two choices. We can either prepare for a low carbon economy or we can prepare for the consequences of a high carbon economy. Um, you know, it's not, you know, low and high with, with no implications of either. Uh, and, and our view is that um, the things that we can be doing now, today, tomorrow, um, to, to move towards a low carbon economy are, are not only easier and less costly, but frankly are a lot more fun <laughs> than some of the consequences of, of not taking action now. Um, so, so yeah, so I think, uh, I think time is up. Time has been up for some time uh, of, of continuing on a path of high carbon and, and we just need to change the momentum and the trajectory, um, you know, not just of of the leading businesses and, and the leading states and provinces and cities and national governments, but but everybody, um, you know, one of the one of the great things about having uh, targets based on climate science like we do is that it's it's very easy to explain to people why your targets are what they are. You can just say, well, we're following the science. The challenge is it's not sufficient if we're the only ones doing it. Right. Because, you know, if you really believe in this, you have to say, well, I've, I've got to do what I can not only to affect my own business or country or city or supply chain, but to help others try and make those same changes um, because it'll take collective action to deliver collective success. Part of the reason that more and more companies are, um, are, are getting into this space uh, is there's more and more companies are seeing more and more examples of others doing it. And it's helping people sort of mentally break through the feasibility barrier, right? So people have a perception that it's it's not possible or it's too expensive or it's too complicated or it's too difficult until they see one of their competitors or a peer or someone else in the industry that's just done it and says, you know, it was some work, but it's, you know, it's a lot easier than you think it is. And then suddenly it makes people go, oh, so... And then they sit down and they do the research and, and they discover that, you know, maybe their idea of what it would take was wrong and that it is possible. And I think that sort of can build on itself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Mars is, is, uh, is private by ownership structure. So we're, we're a privately owned business and, and historically we were very private about everything else. Um, you know, we just didn't really talk to the world and, uh, and sustainability is really one of the big reasons that we've started to talk uh, more vocally. Uh, and, and our work on climate is a great example of that, you know, to the point I made about if you're if you really believe in the science, you've got a you've got some obligation to convince everybody that we need to be taking action here. Um, and uh, and RE100 is a great platform for us to sort of help add to that message and, and amplify and and help um, provide that sense of comfort for other companies and, and other entities um, that that this is a this is a problem that can be solved. This is an opportunity that we can we can deliver against.
So I, I think there, there's a couple ways that, um, that that corporate action and the sort of commitments like RA100 and other things going on in Climate Week influence the, the, the international dialogue around climate agreements and treaties leading up to. And um, as, uh, as I think it was uh, Laurent Tubiana said, not, it's not about getting to Paris, it's getting through Paris, right? So that's the, the, just another milestone on the journey. Um, you know, I think a lot of it comes back to, to this point about feasibility, right? So I think at some level, um, policymakers are, are maybe hesitant about making commitments consistent with the science, either because they, they don't believe there is economic feasibility and a, a rationale behind some of those policies, or even if they believe there is economic rationality, that they're worried about constituents, you know, in their home countries or businesses not feeling the same way. So I think the, the more that we as corporations and then ultimately more broadly, we as citizens can, can send the message to, to policymakers that actually, you know, this, you know, we welcome these changes, right? These, these don't represent something that we're going to get upset about. Um, you know, I think that can help strengthen the role. I mean, the, um, uh, the Premier uh, Couillard, I guess it is, from, uh, from Quebec, you know, made the point of that he actually feels like this is something where if he wasn't taking action, that he would be getting pressured by his constituents, right? And and I think that's um, that would be a great state to be able to to pivot things to where where the leaders feel like, you know, it, it's not about can they do enough, but it's have they done enough. Um, so I think that's a, a role that RE100 and all the other commitments out of Climate Week can can play.